understanding in the NASA Glenn Research Center's Zero Gravity Research Facility. They Which is 500, 500 feet. 500 foot shaft into the ground. There's a vacuum chamber so we can take all the air resistance out. And that's basically how we create a weightless experience here on Earth. Our overall objective to do is to tell the NASA story in various, to various audiences in various places. And uh, so we do that through an exhibits outreach program, a speakers bureau, uh, through our visitor center, and through uh, various activities along those lines, including conducting a tour program like I'm doing uh, here today with you. And I appreciate that. <laughs> and we, uh, the idea is to take people and show them the cutting edge research that we're doing and how that works its way into the technology that expands the reach of our human and robotic explorers in space. We've got various um, uh, configurations of, of lunar roving or Mars roving vehicles, and they're going through this simulant material. This tire is made completely of metal. The reason you make it of metal is you can't have rubber on the moon. Rubber at lunar temperatures becomes brittle and also melts right. under the sun. So you have to have a metal tire. The unique thing about this metal tire is that it's a locally soft tire and it's able to carry the loads. So what that means is that it can carry the weight of the astronauts and the vehicle on a flat surface, but as it drives over rocks or obstacles, it deforms hmm. locally. I'm holding my hand a baseball that actually was flown in space, and there's a nice story behind this baseball. Uh, October 1995, being here in the, the Glenn Research Center in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, big Indians fans, and we saw the Indians progressing deeper into the playoffs. They really hadn't even been in the playoffs in a number of years. Looked like they were going to make it into the World Series. Same time, we had a shuttle on the launch pad with seven experiments from the NASA Glenn Research Center waiting to go. And that mission, unfortunately, kept getting delayed, but it worked out to be good timing for us. Right. I was able to contact the Indians and said, hey, if we can smuggle on a baseball onto the shuttle and get the crew to do a <laughs> Smuggle pitch, is a technical term, right? Yeah, without going through all the normal <laughs> protocol. Um, uh, all the types of things, yeah. able to get it on board. So one of my counterparts from the Johnson Space Center, who was in Florida for the launch, went out and purchased an American League ball and a National League ball, yeah. got them on. Crew didn't even know about it until they got it into, uh, into orbit. And they were able to do the uh, a first pitch from space, the first time we've done a ceremonial first pitch in space. And it worked out well because this space shuttle mission actually had a space lab, which gave a larger space for conducting experiments, but also enough to actually throw the toss. And it... Um clearly became something that was really interesting to people that um, they broadcast it on television so, yeah, so uh, that game was actually broadcast tens of millions of people on, saw uh, it on ABC World, game five a very uh, popular World Series good attendance and so we were able to do that and actually on the field we worked with the Indians and their game day staff and came up with a fun thing with the video on the jumbotron and then actually had another baseball that we launched over the scoreboard onto the field the way it came through the lights it looked like it came right out of space nice onto the middle of the field that the mascot go out and retrieve it. And so part of your job is thinking of things like this. Trying to think of ways, especially as a research center, you know, our role in that mission was to build experiments on fluids and combustion processes and put them in there. But they were going, you know, being done by astronauts who train in Houston and one on a rocket launch from Florida. And so what are creative ways to get a little bit of extra visibility and even for the shuttle program itself, mission STS-73 means it was the 73rd mission right, to go. Right. You're, oh, yeah, been there, Here, done yeah. that. How do you create a little do bit more something interest different. and excitement? And there we were. We had something on ABC television. Nothing like America's game, right? That's right. Typical day is um, probably like a lot of folks, a lot of time on the phone, on the computer, emails, doing a lot of planning. Uh, a lot of what I do is actually uh, project management. So looking at an event, taking requests, figuring out which ones we want to do, um, what's the right exhibit for this audience, who's mm -hmm. the right people to go and staff the exhibits or speak to them, uh, is it a school group, is it a professional group, and uh, just trying to come up with the right messages and give them a broad you know, exposure. Do you do a lot of media outreach as well? We do. Um, the other parts of our team is uh, we are in the community and media relations office. So I do the community side and we have the media relations team. We also have a team that operates our web portal and social media and then we also do internal communications to our employees so they know how to get involved and know what's going on and speak about things. Great. Thanks so much. Uh -huh.